Hi, it's Mark for Ableton Daily. Today, we're going to create the bass line from the song Yeah, Yeah by Body Rocks. And it's inspired by the remix version from D. Ramirez. And it was a really good track and it was very successful for him. So I decided to create my own version of it using the operator instrument inside Ableton Live. If you don't have the operator instrument, it's available at the Ableton website. I'll play back the bass line so you can hear the sound. If you would like to download this project and even the operator preset for the sound, go to ableton.daily.com and sign up to become a VIP member. It's absolutely free. Just go to the website, enter your name and email address, and you'll get access to the back end of the site where you can download presets and projects from my videos. All right, before we start this sound, Operator defaults to the FM synthesis algorithm when you first insert it into the track. So we'll need to change this to an additive synthesis algorithm. Right here at the global settings, you'll find the little algorithm icon. Go ahead and click on this and select the last one here where it shows four squares in a row. And that's just a very simple additive synthesis algorithm that we can use. All right, the first thing we're going to do is modify oscillator A. Go ahead and click right here to activate it. Now, let's adjust the course frequency. Go ahead and click on the course frequency, enter 2, the number 2. On the keyboard, press enter. It's just a really fast way to enter values. For the level, let's go ahead and set this to 3.8. That's a negative 3.8 decibels. Now let's move over to the envelope. We're going to need a very fast attack, so just go ahead and leave that at 0. 0.00. .00. And for the decay, let's decrease this down to a 1.00 milliseconds. I'll just go ahead and type that in, 1.00, and press Enter. Okay, for the sustain time, that's okay. We can leave the sustain like it is. But for the release time, let's click on Release and enter in 450 and press Enter. Okay, now let's set the waveform for this oscillator. Right here where it says wave, click right here, and then a little menu will pop up. Now we're going off the screen just a little bit, but just come down and select saw 64. And this is just a sawtooth waveform, and it's one of Ableton's uh, preset styled wave waveforms that you can use. Let's move over to oscillator B. Now for the course on oscillator B, Set the course frequency to 3. You can go ahead and move the knob or just press 3 and then enter. For the level, the level, let's increase the level to a negative 10 dB. I'll just put negative 10, enter. And then over on the envelope, go ahead and click on envelope right here and that will display the graphical envelope so you can see how it moves as we change the settings. For the attack, Go ahead and keep this at zero. For the decay, you can enter in 1.00, enter, which makes a very, very short decay time. For the release, 280. And last, we'll need to set the waveform for this oscillator. So just go ahead and click right here on this menu and select a square wave. And it's going to be square wave number six. So it's just off the screen here, down here. There it is. So it should say SQ6. If you have that, let's go ahead and move on. Over to oscillator C. And for the uh, course frequency, let's go ahead and click on course, enter in 10. And for the level of this oscillator, let's go ahead and turn this up to a negative 8 or somewhere around there is fine a negative 8.0 so I'll just enter in negative 8.0 and there you have it 
And over on the envelope settings here for oscillator C, for the decay, let's set this back to 1.00. Okay, and for the release, enter 450. So they're very similar to the other oscillators, uh, but I wanted to come in here and do each one manually. You can right click on an oscillator and copy the envelopes from other oscillators. But for this tutorial, we're going to go through here one by one because there's just a little bit difference between each envelope. Okay, so I have this release set here and let's change the waveform to a saw waveform and we're going to select saw D. Saw D has more of a harder edge to it. All right, and you can leave everything else like it is. Let's go ahead and click on oscillator D. This is the last one for the course. Click on the course frequency, change this to five. I'll enter in five. And then for the level, let's go ahead and turn the level up to a negative 5.3. And I'm using the settings here that I used when I created the sound so you can make the closest sound possible. All right, so moving on to the envelope for oscillator D. For the attack, uh, the attack is still the same, so just keep that at zero milliseconds for that. And decay, let's enter in 52 and press enter. 52 milliseconds is fine. And for the release, 550. So we have a little bit longer release time on this oscillator. And for the waveform, we're going to select Saw D, which is just off the screen here, Saw D. So if you have it looking just like this, then you're ready to go to the next step. The next step is the filter section. Over here on the filter section right here, go ahead and activate it and turn it on by clicking on this button right here. Okay, so we're almost getting to that sound that we're looking for. For the filter settings, Let's set the frequency a little bit lower here because we're going to use the envelope that will affect the frequency. For the resonance, go ahead and turn that down to 0 0.45. So 0 0.45. There we go. Okay, with a default low pass filter, 12 dB is just fine. Make sure that's set there. And then over on the envelope for this filter, the attack needs to be 1.50 milliseconds. So for the decay, enter in 100. So it's 100 milliseconds for that. And for the release time, that'll be 200 milliseconds. And the sustain, 40%. Okay. And then you can leave the peak the way it is at 100%. That's fine. Okay. The initial is fine. Leave that the way it is. But there's one important part about this. The filter will not be affected by the envelope unless you tell operator that this is what you want to do. Do you see right here where it says envelope? Well, it's currently set to 0%. So we'll need to increase this at least up to 75%. I'll go ahead and just click on it and enter in 75. And let's go ahead and play the sound. The envelope allows us to control the way the frequency cutoff behaves. By having a short attack with a high peak, we can tell the filter to bring in those higher frequencies at the beginning of the sound and then to cut the frequency off around the set decay time. And we also have a very uh, low volume sustain. But this totally gives us the ultimate result that we're looking for. So we want to tell operator that the filter needs to be affected by the envelope. And this is why we need to give the envelope a value. So I'll just put this back to 75. Okay. The next step that we're going to do is move over to the pitch settings. All we have to do is turn it on. And then right down here where it says glide, 
make sure that the glide button is turned on. Glide allows us to slide from one note to the other. And if I play two notes back and forth, you can hear the glide happening here. But it's not that noticeable because we don't have much time between the notes. So we'll need to increase the time. Now listen to the difference. Okay, this is quite essential to this particular sound that we're creating as it does have the slide effect. Set the glide time to about 275. All right, let's hear how it sounds. Let's go ahead and play this back and see how it sounds. It sounds like it's probably an octave too high. So what we can do is transpose this using the pitch section right here and just transpose this down to a negative 12, which is just one octave lower. Okay, that sounds better. So this is also a very important part. The two knobs in operator that you will be adjusting the most are the time knob in the global settings and also the frequency cutoff knob in the filter section. And what the time does, it's a global control for all the envelope rates. I found that keeping this about up here around 75% works really well. And then I can go ahead and tweak it as I play the sound back. So we're pretty much finished with the sound. We'll just need to keep an eye on the frequency cutoff and adjust the time settings to our liking. Let's go ahead and play this back. You can hear that time. See how it sounds? The frequency cutoff, what we're doing here is we're just allowing more higher frequencies into the sound by turning this up. And then by having it lower, we're cutting off the higher frequencies, only allowing the lower frequencies of the current value through. So that's pretty much it. Hope you enjoyed the lesson. Hey, if you like the videos, please subscribe and uh, send me a comment and I'll get back to you. Thanks for watching and uh, we'll see you on the next one. Take care.